Hey, I'm Mike Aylesworth. This is a very interesting answer to a very interesting question. Uh, we've got a design problem where we want to design a gun of some kind. <clears throat> That's our gun. And it's going to shoot at a certain angle, theta, projectile, and that projectile has to hit a target 200 meters away that is 5 meters above the ground. It also has to clear an obstacle that is 100 meters away and is 10 meters high. 5 meters. we have to find a initial velocity which will come out in our problem we have to find this theta we have to find the distance between in our gun it's uh, two charged plates and we have to find out how far they are apart from each other and what the voltage is in the gun. So that seems pretty straightforward, um, but it only seems that way, as we're about to find out. So the first thing we want to do is take a good look at what the question is actually asking. Um, you've got an initial starting point here, and we'll call that zero. Um, as if there were an axis here. So this is your y, this is your x. Um, but your ending point is five meters higher than that. So uh, your parabola isn't one of these really nice straightforward ones where you can just come up with an equation, find the roots, and solve. Um, we have to change things around a little bit and solve for some point, some x, y coordinate um, on that function. So let's get going on this. Um, first place to start, uh, probably a good place to start, is our kinematic equations. Um, the most basic of which, I think it's basic, um, you have a distance, you can call it D, uh, some people call this X as well, um, X final, is your X initial plus your V initial times T plus one half your acceleration times time uh, squared. couple things about this. We aren't given our V initial in our problem statement. So this is something, um, this is an, un an unknown. Uh, we are given our distances. We have our x, y coordinate that we want to get to, uh, but we don't know any of the starting conditions. We don't know theta. We don't know um, V sub zero. So let's look at what we do know about v naught. Uh, our initial condition is that we have some v naught 
at sum theta. And we have an x component of that and we have a y component of that. So this is v not x, this is v not y. Uh, we're going to want to break this up into two pieces. Uh, we want to solve one kinematic equation in the x direction and one kinematic equation in the y direction. Why do we want to do that? Well, mainly because we know the acceleration only in the y direction. We know gravity is the only acceleration that is um, acting on our, on our particle. In the y, or excuse me, in the, in the x direction, there is no acceleration uh, once it leaves the, the gun. If we solve, if we're able to solve enough of this uh, to get how long the particle is in the air in the y direction, then we can take that uh, time factor and substitute it in the, the x direction equation and solve it that way. So let's see where we get with that. Your v not x and your v not y. Okay, so we know that both of these are going to be some component of your v not. And luckily you can kind of see how this triangle starts to form, right? So you've got this, here's theta, here's v not. Um, and what you want to find is this length, uh, this magnitude. Uh, in, v, in the x direction, we know the hypotenuse. Uh, we want to find the adjacent. We know the hypotenuse. We want to find the adjacent. We use cosine. In the y direction, that's easy. It's just the one we're not using tangent. <laughs> we just use a uh, sine. Now we have our, an ability to break this equation into two different equations where your x final distance is equal to your x initial distance plus we're going to take this term v naught um, let's see v naught cosine theta times t plus one half a t squared your y final equals your y naught why not? Because I said so. <laughs> v naught sine theta t plus one half a t squared. Okay, so you've broken those two components uh, out of these two out of this one. That doesn't really get you too far, but let's keep playing with it. x f equals x naught plus v naught cosine theta t plus one half a t squared. Let's just take a look at this. We know um, your x naught starting position is zero, so that goes to zero. Um, I like crossing things off. We worked so hard to get this, we know that the velocity in the x direction is absolutely not zero. Um, neither is the time, so that stays. However, the acceleration in the x direction does go away because there is no uh, acceleration field uh, moving the particle once it leaves the, the gun. In our y direction, you end up with y0, y0, plus 
B naught sine theta t plus one half a t squared. Okay. Gravity is our acceleration. This term is not zero. Our velocity in the y direction is not zero. The initial y position is zero. So we've got that. There's one more thing to uh, point out, and it's really important to point it out now. First of all, um, we want we don't have an unknown f x final. We know that this is going to be 200 meters. We know that the y position we want is 5 meters. So put that out there. The other thing that we know is that we want the final position to be at both 5 meters in the y direction and 200 meters in uh, the x direction. So you set both of these equations equal to each other. How can that possibly be? Well, let's say in the case of your x equation, you set it equal to 0. You subtract the 200 plus v naught cosine theta t done. Um, yeah. You subtract the 5 These are both equal to zero. You can now set them equal to each other. I'm going to make a substitution here and say that this is gravity. Um, it's also negative. So, plus one half negative g squared, uh, t squared. Okay. So this is starting to expand out into what may seem like an impossible equation. Just wait, there's more. If you want to resolve this, you're going to have to get this into the form of a uh, polynomial equation. That takes more than a hop, skip, and a jump. Um, and rather than actually derive the equation, uh, I looked it up. Uh, this is the, pr the trajectory formula. So believe it or not, this whole thing is going to resolve into I didn't come up with this. This is a very famous equation, um, and uh, it's easy to find in most advanced textbooks on physics, uh, as well as the internet. So, what do we do with this? Well, there's two directions you can go. Um, before I make that point, I actually want to point out this is a polynomial equation. There is an x and there is an x squared. So this is already in a form that is useful 
from this form you can find the roots. I just so happen to have calculated the roots of that equation. Now, if you thought that was bad, just wait for the roots. Okay. Um, We can see the translation of both the 200 and the negative 5 come through this equation here. So to change this equation and, and make it work, you basically have, I'm going to make a side point here real quick. You have a graph. And from our problem statement, it kind of looks like this, but it ends here, right? Okay. In order to make this work and figure out really where, you know, what your starting and ending conditions are, you've got to translate this. And it's got to be translated up and to the left. In order to translate a graph, to the left, let's say let's say you have a parabola and the polynomial looks like x squared. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Plus two x plus four. Fine. Um, in order to move this, you would actually have to add. Let's say you want to move it five units to the left. So five. Five units this way. Um, in order to do that, you would actually have to translate this function into x plus 5 squared plus 2 times x plus 5 plus 4. A um, similar thing has to happen with the, with the y direction. Uh, in order to move it it, it, it's not as counterintuitive. Um, your y, in order to move it up, plus 200 equals, and let's just say it's this, this easy polynomial. You would then subtract the 200 from both sides. And that would shift your whole graph down. So that's really what we want to do. We want to use our out-of-the-box trajectory formula, but we want to be able to use it on our rather complicated setup where we have a zero, zero beginning, po uh, beginning point and a uh, 205 ending point. This formula is only set up to change the x direction, give you, give you something in the x direction. It'll tell you where it's going to land. Uh, so we need to tweak it a little bit. And this is, this is, a f these aren't the numbers, but this is the method that we're, we're using to do that. So back to where we've found the roots for the, the, okay, here's the trajectory formula. This is the generic form of it. 
we've plugged in the x plus 5 and the y minus 200 and all of this and derived the root which I'm not done writing because it's that long Okay, so you could stop there and start solving, or you could do what I did and take this trajectory formula. Actually, it's so important it's going to get its own piece of paper, so... We're going to take this formula and plug it into Desmos, uh, which is a great website that allows us to do some serious math. Make sure I get this. What I've done here is I've lost my pen. Well, I'll use my finger. Um, I have put in our put in the formula that we want, um, and that's this is our trajectory formula. There's several for, uh, variables that we can then change in order to find the right combination to hit uh, 200 slash five. Okay. First, a really important point. There are an infinite number of solutions to this problem because there are an infinite number of parabolas that could go through that, those two points. Well, that one point at uh, 205. They all have different shapes. They all have completely different um, variables. And the two variables that matter are the angle and the velocity. So, I chose, I chose 45. Now, if you think about it, let's go back to our trajectory formula and look. We've got cosine theta. Um, if I were smart, I could have, we also have a, tan, a tangent of theta. Um, I could have chosen 90 degrees. I could have chosen zero degrees. Uh, smart in the sense that, oh, I really don't want to do much math. If I chose those, however, it wouldn't solve our problem because it would either go straight up or straight sideways. It would never ever hit the point that we're interested in. I chose 45 degrees because uh, it's a nice balance between the two and I figured it would have a similar velocity. Turns out it does. Given an angle of 45 degrees and a velo an initial velocity of 45.3, I end up with, let's see here, 200, getting close to 200, come on. Four point nine eight two at two hundred point one, so that's pretty darn, pretty darn close for the purposes of of our equation. All right, given that we have answered <laughs> only one of the three things that we want. We know our initial theta, well, our theta, is 45 degrees. I'm also writing that our v naught is equal to 
um, 45.3. The reason I'm writing that is because that's going to determine what our, uh, if you remember our gun, we have a gun here, and it's got a distance between plates and a delta V. Uh, your initial velocity, meters per second, is going to be dictated by, or rather the, the delta V and D is going to be dictated by your uh, initial velocity that you want. Okay, so what's cool about this is we have a lot of room to play here um, in order to find inside the gun. Alright, so this is kind of our phase two. Uh, we know that, let's see, what do we know? We know E, our electrical field, is equal to the change of, oh, I was going to say change of velocity, it's our um, voltage difference over our change of distance. It's really just our distance. We've got change on the mind. We know that Q delta V uh, is equal to one half MV squared plus MGH. That's just our energy equation. Uh, so, from that, let's see what we can find as far as tying our delta V to our E and thus to our D. So, the MV squared, this is going to be our initial velocity. MGH. Here's what's tricky about this. If you actually look at what's given, here's what's given. This is not a nominal distance. Um, so there would be some h. However, because we have so much room to play, we can make this delta v very small. And so if you would if you do the trigonometry on that, if this hypotenuse is very small, because that's where our gun is, uh, the height, right, is going to be very, the height of that triangle will be very trivial. Uh, therefore, haha, <laughs> goodbye MGH, no more potential energy for you. We are given the charge of the particle, and that is negative 525, uh, what is this, microcoulombs. Okay, so we've got negative 525 microcoulombs, and I think we're also given the mass of the particle at, yep, at 275. 75 milligrams. Okay, this always gives me a headache. Um, so we've got, let's convert this right off the bat, negative uh, 525, uh, that's going to be 10 to the negative 6. Okay, and this equals mass. This is going to be 275 times 10 to the negative 3 grams, which is 275 times 10 to the negative 6th kilograms. Um, okay. We want um, 
Let's start with our energy equation. Q delta V equals one half mv naught squared. All right, what do we know? We know mass, we know v naught, we know we do not know voltage, and we know charge. So let's let's solve this for voltage, which is what we don't know. Our change in voltage equals one half. Forgive me, all math professors. Uh, M v squared, and we'll have a Q down here. I'm just putting the numbers in here. Okay. And I will do a quick calculation. All right, so I've got, this comes out to negative 537 times 10 to the third uh, equals negative 5.37 times 10 to the fifth. And what are our units? This is delta V. Our units are V. Okay, so we know what our V is. Um, goody. Okay, that is the second of the three figures we are supposed to figure out. Uh, now, let's move on to our last one, which should be relatively easy. You, we want d, delta d, this is the distance of our gun, right? Here's our... This is the particle being ejected through the gun. Um, we know that E, the E field, right, the electric field, equals delta V over D, delta D. This is D. Okay, so rearrange this for delta D. This equals delta V over E. Okay, here's the part that is a gift. Um, E can be anything, anything at all. So if we want our delta D to be really, really small and not relevant particularly to the beginning of our graph, right? We don't want it to be up here. We want it to be more or less at the origin. We can choose a really small uh, distance between the two plates. I'm going to choose 0 0.001 meters equals, and I take the uh, voltage from our that we just figured out. Um, over. So, what's interesting about this, I just nominated a value for something we're supposed to solve. Uh, we don't know what E is, we don't, we're only given one of the components. So, I can very easily simply nominate a value. 
Um, let's find out, just out of curiosity, what kind of E field that creates. So that's negative 5.37 times 10 to the fifth volts uh, over uh, 0 0.001 meters. So, <laughs> really shouldn't have to calculate that. That, uh, that just comes out to... Well, either I've done something wrong or my calculator has, because if I divide this number by this number, I should get something 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. I mean, that should be it. This should be an 8. So I'm just going to make it an 8, um, and I'll worry about my calculator later. So, uh, that's a really big... <laughs> that's a big, big, big E-field. Like a really big one. <laughs> um, that's uh, volts per meter. So, but we're not constrained, um, and maybe the Navy has a use for this somewhere in a nuclear reactor. We have a theta that is 45 degrees. Given that theta, we have to have a delta V that is 5.3, excuse me, negative 5.37 times 10 to the neg 10 to the positive 5 volts, which is also a pretty big figure. Um, and we also have a delta D then of that we've nominated 0 0.001 meter. I hope that's been informative.